Getting meetings set up can be an actual headache of going back and forth and trying to figure out when works for everyone. You don't need that in your life. Let's get that streamlined along with the rest of your freelance business with Moxie. Uh, Workspace settings and then meeting schedulers is how you'll set this up. And then you can add a new meeting here with the plus button. Let's take a look at a meeting scheduler that I have created. So you'll give this a name. And that is going to be viewable uh, in the link, and it will also be a, a link you can use in your uh, when you use your token. So you that may be customer facing; it doesn't have to be. But just as a heads up, uh, you'll want to give that something, uh, give that a little bit of thought. Uh, add your meeting duration. Uh, if you have connected Zoom or uh, a Microsoft Calendar or um, your Google Calendars, you'll be able to set those up in a Teams meeting or a Google Meet or a Zoom as well. Well, you can also do phone numbers, add an in-person address, or custom instructions. And then you'll be able to add those here. This message is what shows up when someone is trying to book. So you'll want to make that uh, super friendly. That's why I have an exclamation part mark there. Um, you'll add this meeting to a connected calendar, which you'll want to do uh, so that way, when someone creates a meeting here, uh, it will add to that correct calendar. Here's your direct link. Uh, you can add a scheduler owner. So if you are collaborating with other folks uh, and you want this to be their meeting, um, I could have someone else uh, be the owner of that meeting. I can also make this meeting uh, add to my pipeline. So if I want uh, someone creates a meeting, uh, I want to drop this into this specific uh, pipeline stage. I can turn this link on and off. So if I don't want to do this kind of meeting right now, I can uh, make it inactive and I can choose to show this in my client portal. Um, in your client portal, that would allow your client who's using the client portal to book this type of meeting. So you could also set up a specific client portal meeting with really specific uh, time blocks or really specific questions if you chose. Uh, the schedule up for this is always going to show up in your in the user's time zone. So despite that this is the time zone that I am creating in, when this shows up for you, whatever time zone that you are in, it will give you my available times listed in your time zone. So uh, you'll set up the available times here. Uh, if you always take a, a lunch break at 1.30, uh, you could always stop your meetings here and you could add another time during the day uh, afterwards that you are going to add. So let's say we'll just do a two o'clock availability until... 445 if you want to add multiple availability blocks during the day. You can also check this against a connected calendar. So that way uh, you can have your general availability, but it's also going to check your calendar and make sure that you're not double booked. Here in the advanced settings, you can allow a uh, clients to only schedule a certain number of days in the future. You can only take so many meetings during the day, and we know this. Uh, so you can have a limit for how many meetings you can have during each day. Uh, you can block time before and after the meeting, set up these increments. Uh, you can set it so that you don't want to have meetings before a certain time or after a certain time and allow yourself some time if you don't want uh, someone to schedule a meeting closer than a certain time. You can add a form here as well. So if you have created a specific form, or I recommend you go and create a specific form for this meeting, and then it will be part of the meeting scheduler. So if someone wants to schedule a meeting with you, they'll have to answer these questions, allowing you to be really fully prepared for this specific meeting. Here in your confirmation, uh, you can have a reminder or a secondary reminder. I always need a second reminder because I remember half an hour before and totally forget by the time the meeting has rolled around. Uh, add in a confirmation email template. So you'll want to create this template uh, before you create the meeting or come back and add it later, uh, like a thank you so much for this meeting template. You can add that here. Uh, and then after scheduling, you can navigate to a custom URL or just to our default confirmation page. 
You can also require payment. So let's say that you are a consultant and all of your time is paid. So you can add payment here, toggle on require payment at booking, how much that is going to cost and your currency, and then include uh, your payment terms here. Uh, this is going to allow them, uh, you'll need a Stripe uh connection here because this is going to have them pay via credit card uh, on your booking page. And then you'll be able to see a preview of what your entire thing looks like. So this will show you exactly what someone is going to see when you share this link with them. So here's what mine looks like. If I want to schedule a time, again, this is showing in my time zone, but this is going to say all time shown in, and this will be your time zone. So let's pick a date. Here is the form that I created. And so the, uh, the person booking will need to answer this information before they can book. And here is where you can see that they are going to pay. Again, you'll need a Stripe connection for that. Uh, and they will uh, add their credit card information here before they can click on this schedule meeting button. And, and that is your meeting scheduler. You can set up as many types of meetings as you like, but this helps you to protect your time and make it so that someone schedules a meeting on your schedule instead of the other way around.